So as we mentioned, let's start with ignoring the gambit and the line that we say, okay, I don't want to dance according to your music. I don't want to take the pawn. I just want to play bishop b6. The best move here is a4, and this will be the main topic of bishop b6. But since this is our really first uh, line that we are analyzing, I like to show some things around just so we can get in the feeling of this position, some reasonably cool examples here, not too many, with b5 immediately. There are two main possibilities, knight d4 and knight a5. And actually, I'm quite a big fan of the move knight a5. I think that it is a simple move that gives black just enough, enough play in this line. For example, take on e5, obviously the main move. If bishop retreating, then just knight f6 and d5, and black is just very happy. There are no, no doubts about that. But what after take? It is actually interesting. What what to play in this position? Very complicated. Bishop d4 is a possibility. Knight takes c4 looks like a possibility. The best move actually is knight h6. Very interesting approach. Black is saying, let me just protect f7. I will keep on with all the threats I want after it. I'll take on c4, play d5, play bishop d4. Let me just protect, first of all, f7. Mm. I can mention, uh, for example, bishop d4 immediately was played. And, okay, it is somewhat complicated uh, position. For example, without go going too much into theory, I just jumped a bit. Knight take f7 is possible, or bishop take f7. Now some games of Mamiderov here. Okay, it's really too sharp to, and, and no point in getting into all those great complications, especially when we have this move that we know is, is best one and, well, putting the pressure on white whites to play here. Okay, white has several moves to play. Bishop e2 is one of them. White has several moves to play. Bishop e2 is one of them. The other possibility is obviously to play d4. Okay, let's first of all start with bishop to e2. Okay, what should be more logical for black than to play bishop to d4? Knight to c4. And here is the tricky part. What exactly to play? If bishop take rook, then knight takes a5 will give white quite enough compensation. I mean, he's down one pawn. He's down one pawn. Right? A, a, an exchange. He gave a rook and he has a knight and a pawn. But he has the center. The knight on h6 looks not really in the game. So this is reasonable. Other possibility. Knight takes c4. But here comes the key move, c3, a very cool move. Mm, I, I think black really has to take on f6, on f2, sorry, followed by queen f6. Okay, this is just nothing but complicated, messy position. Something like this is suggested lines. Okay, white has no development, black pieces are kind of messy. I think black has to be very very okay in such position in principle. Now, maybe the best move in this position is this interesting queen to h4. Why, why I like this move so much? Because queen to h4, attacking e4, attacking f2 more importantly, but after the simple castle, there is knight takes c4 and followed by knight to g4. Well, let's see. Castle. And of course, this, this is pretty much impossible, right? Very pretty much impossible. So we are back into our c3. Bishop b6. 
and big problem for white. Because after d4, well, he's a piece down and take on c4 really allows knight g4. So this queen h4 is a pretty cool idea. Most likely white has to play something like castle we've seen is wrong, so play something like g3. Queen takes c4. But in such position, I don't think that there should be many complaints from black. I mean, of course, it is very complicated. But the knight, of course, let's not forget the hanging knight. But then there is the rook on a1. Now the bishop might be trapped there. All in all, I would say that black should be very okay after queen to h4. So let's go back a little bit and see what are we going to play if not if not d4 immediately so bishop e2 bishop d4 knight c4 was one possibility d4 immediately right now okay but after d6 bishop take take the knight okay we have a position that the two bishops are under attack white has to give the bishop Yes, white has four pawns here. Four pawns is no joke. But on the other hand, look at this development. What is that? This is not how one can play when black has the rook on the G file. The both bishops are open. I like. Let's play. Let's get our pieces in the game. Knight to C4. Knight C4. We're after Queen H5. King F8. Queen F3. King E8. Black is better here. His pieces dominating the board are all super active. White's in big trouble. Let me go back. Instead of knight to c4, black played queen g5. Okay, and white developed knight d2 and ended winning the game. Two strong grandmaster Kornosov against Jimshi. Around 26, well, more. These days, way more than 2600 federating. This was played in Moscow 2005. Okay. Let's go and continue with knight to d4, which is a logical continuation for black. So we are going back to the position after b5. Knight a5 gives us some idea. But the problem is that for white, that he cannot really take on e5 because he's too vulnerable. This is why a4 will be our main move. But let's explore a little bit knight d4. You know, it was interesting. This, for example, is taken for Morozevich Adams, one of the examples I'm going to show you. Two of the very, very best players in the world, especially in 1999 when it was played. They were both top 10 in the world. Interesting why knight a5, which I believe is a pretty strong reply, wasn't played. Knight d4 was played and Morozevich, which is one of the names that we're going to repeatedly hear in our video, Play knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4 is one possibility, and pawn takes d4 is another. <coughs> Let's start with pawn take. This is how pawn take. This is how Adams played. A queen g4 is one thing always to consider. By the way, I, I think this is an interesting idea. Queen g4, queen f6, queen to g3. I, I think white is tiny better here. I think the queen on g3 is just excellent. But we'll go back to our position. Castle was played immediately. Knight to e7. So now queen g4. Black can just castle. He doesn't need to play queen f6. Queen h3. Castle. d3. d6. Okay, it is a fairly normal, kind of equalish position. Maybe why? Maybe a tiny bit prefer white, but we will see. It's just a matter of taste. The way the game followed. Not really anything. Just healthy move. Black completed his development. Everything is defended. Queen e, Rook e8 defending on e7. Take on e6. Okay, I'll just show a few more moves. Knight c4. Nothing really special here. This is Morozevich Adams. We mentioned it. A rapid game, I believe, in a strong rapid tournament in Frankfurt, 1999. The game ended in a draw. Take with the pawn is a possibility, but if we will go back to 
Move number six. Now let's see what happens if take with the bishop. C3, bishop, b6, d4. Okay. Mm, let's first of all see a reasonab reasonable continuation. And then we will see where we can have a lot, a lot of action. Queen h4. Okay, we cannot argue much on some move like this. Castle and knight f6. So black wants to have the, bish the queen in front of the knight. Knight d2. Well, obviously the knight is heading to f3. Defending h2 in many lines. d6. White is a bit better here, no doubt. Uh, I, li I like this continuation. a4. A5, and here maybe the best continuation was actually knight to f3. And after queen h5, take on e5, take. Actually, I'm sorry. We should go into this position. After a5, Freddy, uh, editor, William, just after a5, this is for the editor, you should cut and I will continue with the next continuation. Which, so after a5, take on a6 is very good for white because it allows him to play a5 and queen a4 at a certain moment. For example, if right now, Black recaptures on a6, the knight f3, queen to h5, a5. This is a really important move. And after bishop retreating, this is the difference playing this line with a4 or without. Capture, capture, bishop a3. Black king is just stuck in the center for free. Now, this is horrible position, and bishop g4 is met with queen a4. Okay. So, in the game, after take on a6, Black played castle, a5, bishop a7, and here, well, what, what to say? I, I think white is just better if he plays very simply, capture, capture, and defend e4. Because after captures on d4, there is this knight f3 idea. I, I think white just better. Also, the way the game went, white was a bit better. Knight f3, queen takes e4, bishop d3, queen g4, take, take, and h3. Again, two very decent grandmaster, Johnny Hector against Hansen, Sunny Hansen form. This is taken in, was played in Denmark 2008. White ended up winning in a long game. Actually, taking on e5 is also a possibility here. So queen h4 is a possibility. We see that the idea of knight d2, knight f3, we will keep seeing this idea. It's a really important idea. But now I want to show you some really cool lines. If we go to the line with bishop takes d4, c3, bishop b6, d4, we mentioned queen h4 as a possibility. But queen e7 leads to a very sharp and very cool play. Castle, knight f6, f4. Very interesting, you know, I guess that many of the lines in the Evans Gambit can be as sharp as this one, and some of them can be very positional and slow, like the Morozevich Adams that we have seen. This is why I wanted to start with this one, because it has a little bit of both, some super sharp lines and some very well, Morozevich Adams, very cool, simple lines. Take on d4, e5. One of the lines that has to be considered here is take on c3, playing the c2 move, and knight to g4, because black by himself gets counterplay here. For example, uh, an innocent move like knight c3, well, may maybe smart, maybe working, but white, for example, has to play g3 here, which is good, but has to be careful of some ideas like h3, this is not really going to work, right? This is pretty much checkmate. This is at least a possibility, I would have to say, for black to play this capture and c2. 94 was played in the game, very cool game. And now after king h1, getting away from all the threats and 
noise over there in the position. Uh, for example, I will mention that mm, take on d4, I think is very questionable because of queen b4 that might be just, well, just putting a lot of the pieces under, under attack for white. Let's look at that continuation. d4 is under attack, c4 is under attack. And what are we going to play after a move like queen to d3? Very powerful d5. White has a broken, destroyed pawn structure. D for C for everything is under attack. This is a no-no. Okay, King H1. This this is no with no doubts the way to go for White. And here, Black played Castle. If Queen C5, if Queen C5, we can simply consider playing Bishop to D3. And after knight takes c3, queen g4, two pawns, but where are black pieces? Not, not in on this board. Black played castle, white played queen f3. Here, I think that black has to play active. This is something that we will see on and on and on. When black is now a pawn up, but it's clear that white is pressuring him. In the game, black took on c3 and very quickly was wiped off the board pretty much. What is the approach that I'm referring to? d5. You have to play active. You give a pawn, you get set one or two moves on your own to develop quickly, and you're in the right track doing the right things. If you just say, oh, I'm a pawn up, let me defend everything, it's not really going to work. So what's happening? After bishop takes d5 in this position... Knight takes c3, and queen d8, the pieces are back in the game. Actually, of course, it is rook d8. I was looking, why, why, why my notation are saying queen d8? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, complicated position, but black gave a pawn, but open is bishop on c8, the rooks are connecting. That is just the right way. So, knight c3. Why is this not so much the right way? Let's see what happened in this game. Take on c3. Now, here comes a difference. Black played queen c5. What happens if we take? We, we see this position a lot. A pawn down, not easy to develop for black. If now d5, white is not going to take on d5. If now d5, white is taking an passa, and tiny bit problemos on the diagonal. This way d5 before was smart, such a smart move, and after queen f6, just take, take, and bishop take f6 with quite substan well, substantial advantage for white, I would say. So, queen c5 is played, and now white, well... Not thinking about going back. Knight d5. Take on c4 and f5. Probably already a lost position for black. Just after queen c5 is just losing the game. Look at black's beautiful development. Okay. Rook e8, f6. Uh, if you put it on the computer, you will be happy about knight f6s aligned to finish the game here. Bishop h6, many, many, basically just throw everything at black is going to win the game. f6 was played. <clears throat> d6, okay, no, no big point in uh, analyzing this much further. And black resigned. Krakops against Azarov, two players have more than 2,500, and here you have the game over by move 18. Like, simply, simply over. No, no, nothing to do in this position. Queen takes f7 is a threat, and 
bishop e6 is not much help after something like this. Take on e8 is a possibility, for example. You know, you, you just... You just name it, followed by queen h6 and bishop h6. Okay, this was just <clears throat> an interesting example that I wanted to show you how sharp things can be. They can be simple. If black knows a lot of theory and he knows well what to do, he should be okay. No, don't think that Evans Gambit is checkmate. No, there are no checkmates in chess today when we have so much computers and... Uh, preparation and everything. But for a club player, you know, if Grandmaster 2500 can get killed like that, well, then many other players as well uh, should be worried, at least with Black playing this line. I'll just go back and mention that we, we looked at Queen H4 as a possibility. Queen E7 was really interesting. What if Knight F6 immediately? Queen F6 actually is also something to consider, but as we can see, white is just castling and playing very much in the style that we mentioned before. A5, bishop c5, and again, white has enough play in that position. Of course, take so dangerous after knight take. Therefore, black chose to play d3. <clears throat> but here, just after knight d2, bishop e6, White is better here. Actually, the best move in this position, White played king h1, the game was messy, and White ended up winning, but both players didn't play spectacular. This is Kornosov against Schneider. Again, 2,500, both players, when they play this game pretty much, so grandmaster level. But e5, that break in the center, oh, this is so strong. If the pawn take, knight, sorry, if the pawn take, the knight e4, just winning a piece, and if the queen take rook e1, queen f4, knight e4, and all active play for black, nothing to, and all active play for white, nothing really to discuss here very much. All the pieces are as active as they can in this position. Knight f6, I, I said that I want at least to touch it, so let's go back and look for a second at knight f6. Take on e5 is, of course, the main move. The main idea here is that knight a4 fails to queen d5 or even bishop take f7 and queen d5. So if this is the situation, then black has to start looking for other moves, like d5, uh, computer suggestion, but this looks artificial. Therefore, we understand why queen e7, queen f6, or queen h4 are the moves to be played. Let's summarize this line a bit. We'll go to the very beginning and look at e4, e5, b4, bishop b6, this position. And now we said that after b5, we, we see some very cool lines with knight d4. But knight a5 is our way to go if we are black. And after knight a5, this knight h6, Keeping all the threats on the board seems just like a very decent possibility for black to play. Okay, well, we need to explore a4, and we are just about to do it.